Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice, an initiative of Rao's IAS. Here we take up important articles from the Hindu and the Indian Express and curate MCQs as per the demand of the civil services exam. Articles covered today are shown on the screen and the detailed description in PDF and Word format can be found on the description box. So let us begin. Starting off with the first article of the day which appeared on page 6 of today's Hindu newspaper. The article talks about how Gujarat plans to become a green hydrogen manufacturing hub. And it also reports that the state has signed several MOUs with big corporations for investments in green energy projects. Now measures have been undertaken all around the world to limit the impact of climate change. And it forms an important part of environment syllabus. This topic is also important from prelims point of view which can be seen from this PYQ of the year 2022 on Climate Action Tracker. Now as hydrogen has the potential to be a key component of our transition to clean energy future, developments around it is important from prelims. On similar lines, we have drafted a practice question number 1. Consider the following statements. Statement 1. Accelerated Clean Hydrogen Initiative has been launched by the United Nations to accelerate adoption of hydrogen as an alternative fuel. Now, this statement is incorrect because it is the World Economic Forum and not the United Nations that has developed the Accelerated Clean Hydrogen Initiative as a part of its Climate Action Platform. This initiative has over 200 members from 60 organizations which includes both public and private stakeholders and they are dedicated to accelerating the development of clean hydrogen economy. Statement 2 Brown hydrogen is produced from methane by a process known as steam reforming. Now this statement again is incorrect because brown hydrogen is produced by gasification which involves turning coal into gas and it produces a large quantities of carbon emissions that are released into the atmosphere. While it is the grey hydrogen that is produced from natural gas through a process called steam reforming. This technology emits far fewer emissions than black or brown hydrogen and it employs black or brown coal in the hydrogen production process. However, this produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Now, which of the statements given above is or are correct? From the above discussion, we can conclude that none of the options are correct, making option D the correct answer. While, as far as PYQ is concerned, option A was the right answer. Moving on to the second article of the day, which appeared on page 12 of the Hindu newspaper. The article reports that the Supreme Court has deferred the implementation of a direction given by Allahabad High Court to conduct carbon dating and scientific survey of the shivling that was found on the premises of Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi. Now, developments in science and technology, its tools and techniques that have been covered in news are important from prelims point of view, which is apparent from this PYQ of the year 2022 on DNA barcoding. Hence, in the context of today's article, here's practice question number 2. Consider the following statements with reference to carbon dating. Statement 1. Carbon dating is a technique that utilizes the property of a highly radioactive isotope of carbon. Now this statement is incorrect because the carbon dating method utilizes the properties of radiocarbon that is carbon-14 which is an isotope of carbon. However, this isotope is just mildly radioactive and not highly radioactive. This method is designed to measure residual radioactivity. The ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 in an organic matter at the moment of its death is same as in every other living thing. But after death, carbon-14 decays and is not replaced. Thus, by measuring the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 in a sample and comparing it to the ratio in a living organism, it is possible to determine the age of a formerly living thing. Now, statement number 2. Radiocarbon dating can determine the age of an organic material up to 50,000 years old. Now this statement is correct because carbon dating 
is used to determine the age of certain archaeological artifacts of a biological origin of up to 50,000 years old, beyond which the amount of carbon-14 remaining in a sample becomes too low to accurately measure. Now, which of the statements given above is or are correct? From the above discussion, we can conclude that option B is the right answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option D was the right answer. Now moving on to the third article of the day, which appeared on page 12 of the Hindu newspaper. The article reports that the Chief Justice of India administered the oath of office to two justices of Supreme Court, which brings the court back to its full sanctioned strength of 34 judges. Now, structures, functions and composition of different levels in Indian judiciary forms an important part of polity syllabus. Hence, it is important from context of prelims point of view as well, which can be seen from this PYQ of the year 2019 on impeachment of Supreme Court judges. On similar lines, here's practice question number three. With reference to the Constitution of India, consider the following statements. Statement one, the Constitution has authorized the President of India to notify a number of judges to be appointed to the Supreme Court. Now this statement is incorrect because according to Article 124, Supreme Court shall consist of Chief Justices and until the Parliament prescribes a larger number of not more than seven other judges. Hence, originally the strength of Supreme Court was eight, which means one Chief Justice and seven other Justices. However, Parliament has subsequently increased the number of judges and in the year 2019, it increased the strength of Supreme Court to 34 total judges, which includes the Chief Justice of India as well. This was done by enactment of Supreme Court Number of Judges Amendment Act of the year 2019. Statement 2. The Chief Justice of India is empowered by the Constitution to administer the oath of a judge appointed to the Supreme Court. Now this statement again is incorrect because according to Article 124, Every person appointed to be a judge of Supreme Court shall, before entering the office, make and subscribe an oath of affirmation to the President or some person appointed in behalf by him. Hence, it is the President and not the Chief Justices who is empowered by the Constitution of India. Statement 3rd. The Constitution has not fixed the tenure of a judge of Supreme Court. Now, this statement is correct. Because the constitution has not fixed a tenure of Supreme Court judge. However, he holds the office until he attains the age of 65 years. Now, which of the following statements given above is or are incorrect? From the above discussion, we can say that statement 1 and 2 is incorrect, thus making option D the correct answer. While as far as PYQ was concerned, option C is the right answer. Now, Moving on to the fourth article of the day, which appeared on page 16 of the Hindu newspaper. This article says that the government has proposed changes to the angel tax that was introduced in the budget on startup investments from non-resident investors. Now, direct tax constitutes an important aspect of revenue mobilization. Thus, fiscal policy is an important part of economy syllabus and is relevant for civil services exam as well, which is apparent from this PYQ of the year 2018 on equalization tax. Based on the article, we have curated practice question number 4. Consider the following statements about angel tax. Statement 1. Angel tax is a tax that listed startups are required to pay on the capital they raise through an issue of shares. Now this statement is incorrect because it is the unlisted startups that are required to pay tax on capital which is raised from issue of shares. Angel tax was first introduced in the year 2012 to deter the generation and use of unaccounted money through subscription of shares of a closely held company at a value that is higher than a fair market value of the firm's share. This provision states that when an unlisted company such as a startup receives equity investment from a resident for issue of shares that exceeds the face value of such shares, 
it shall be counted as an income of startup and hence will be subjected to income tax statement 2 funds raised from a foreign investor falls out of the ambit of angel tax now this statement again is incorrect because in the latest amendment by finance act of 2023 the government has made changes to income tax act with these latest amendment the government has included foreign investors in the ambit of angel tax meaning when a startup raises a funding from a foreign investor this too will now be counted as an income and hence will be taxable now which of the statements given above is or are correct from the above discussion we can safely say that option d was the right answer now as far as pyq is concerned option d again is the right answer now moving on to the fifth article of the day which appeared on page 13 of the indian express the article reports that the andhra pradesh high court has set aside a government order that regulated public gatherings the court held that the tradition of public meetings processions assemblies have been historically culturally and politically recognized in this country and it forms an important facet of political life fundamental rights as guaranteed by the constitution of india is very important from prelims point of view and has been asked by upsc again and again this can be seen from this pyq of the year 2020 on fundamental rights that incorporates protection against untouchability in the context of news we have curated a practice question number 5 with reference to right to assembly as enshrined under the article 19 of the constitution consider the following statements statement 1 the state can impose reasonable restrictions on the exercise of right to assembly on grounds of security of the state and decency or morality now this statement is incorrect because the state imposes reasonable restrictions on the exercise of right of assembly on two grounds namely sovereignty and integrity of india and public order which includes maintenance of a traffic in the area concerned and the grounds of security of state and decency or morality is imposed against right of freedom of speech and expression statement number 2 the right to assembly does not include the right to strike this statement is correct because although every citizen has a right to assemble peacefully and without arms and this right includes the right to hold public meetings demonstrations and take out processions however this provision does not protect violent disorderly or riotous assemblies and also this right does not include a right to strike now which of the statements given above is or are correct from the above discussion we can conclude that option b is the right answer as far as pyq is concerned option d was the right answer moving on to the final article of the day which appeared on page 17 of the indian express here the central board of rbi has approved a transfer of dividend of rupees 87416 crores to the union government for the accounting year of 2022 23 and this dividend is a 188% jump from last year's transfer this transfer has provided a major boost to government's fiscal position now India's central bank that is RBI its powers and functions is important from prelims point of view as in the year 2012 a question appeared on RBI's role as a banker to the banks in India on similar lines here's practice question number 6 consider the following statements regarding RBI's dividend to the government statement 1 the bimal jalan committee has stated that the surplus distribution policy must take into account the total realized equity now this statement is correct as capital that the rbi requires to hold counter against the unforeseen risks or event are held in two types of accounts the first is realized equity while the second is revaluation reserves this realized equity is transferable to the government and funds in the revaluation reserves are not transferable to the government and the bimal jalan committee has stated that the surplus distribution policy must take into account the total realized equity and only if the realized equity is above the requirement of 5.5 to 5.6% 
the entire net income should be transferred to the government. While if it is below the threshold of 5.5 to 6.5 percent, first the risk provisioning is made to the extent necessary and only the residual net amount is transferred to the government. Statement 2. Realized equity is sourced from profits made by appreciation in foreign currency with Reserve Bank of India. Now this statement is incorrect because the source of profits in realized equity is interest given on loans to banks, interest on government securities and interest on loans to state governments. While the revaluation reserves sources includes appreciation in foreign currency with RBI and appreciation in gold prices etc. Now, which of the statements given above is or are correct? From the above discussion, we can say that option A is the right answer. Whereas PYQ is concerned, option D was the right answer.